Hi everyone, this is Gleb, and I want to show an example from my Cypress Workshop Basics repo. Well, I always in this repo show the task to go through the user interface, right? I visit the page, right? This is how the application looks at that moment. I get the input box, type write more tests, which changes the application as shown. My application is making REST API calls, as you can see right here. Uh, it's getting the initial list of to-dos, it's posting the to-do on the server, and then I'm finding the new to-do, finding the destroy button, clicking on it, the app is sending the delete HTTP request. I reload the page and confirm that the list of to-dos using Scientress app is empty. Okay, now it's all good, right? If I can operate on the user level and test everything, that's perfect. But sometimes, especially as you develop a new feature, it makes sense to test the REST API endpoint by itself without using the DOM interface. These types of tests are called API tests, and you can use Cypress to write API tests. Let me show you how. So I have a test placeholder right here, and right now it does nothing. And just to save space on the screen, I'm going to make the command log wider so we can see more. First thing I do in my test, I call the REST API at a special endpoint called reset. And I'm passing an empty list of to-dos. This removes all existing to-dos. So I'm resetting the data on the server. Okay, now I want to add a new item. So this is what I do. I use the same side request command. It's a post method. And the API endpoint is to-dos. And I can do the same thing where I have a title and complete it, right? And if I save, notice what happens. The test runner first sends the reset call, and then it sends the post to do's. And notice the API responding with 201. Now, this is a request that is similar to how you would use fetch, right, to make API call. Now, from the response, I can say, okay, uh, it's body. Right? And we can, you know, confirm the properties, right? And the way I like to see what the endpoint returns when we pause things is by opening the console and clicking either on request or on the body property. So this is what the server returns to us. It returns the title, it assigns an ID of one, and completely is still false. All right, let's confirm it. We can say should have keys, and we have ID, title, completed. Perfect. Now, if a body of a response has ID, title, completed, why don't we grab the ID? Okay, and we can always, you know, kind of dump it into the command log by using scilog. So this is the ID we got. Okay, now we can use this ID, anything you get from the application or from a network or from a server, you have to use that then command to actually use it. We can confirm it's a number. We can make a request to get what to do by ID and confirm its body, let's say title, so it will write more tests wherever we sent initially, right? We can also maybe delete the new item, right? To confirm that delete works, right? And we use the same side request for everything. Anytime you want to do HTTP request, you do the same thing, okay? Um, let's say you want to confirm what kind of status code you get. Uh, so you can say it's status, and in my case, it will be 200. That's what my backend returns when it deletes an item. So we just perform entire API test by just executing a couple of calls, getting the ID of a new item, fetching it from the server again, and deleting it. Now, there might be a problem if we run the test a couple of times. Okay, right here. My backend is so simple, it actually doesn't save the item immediately to the file. So you might get into a situation where you're trying to get a uh, to-do item that you just created, and the server says 404, I did not find it. So it helps, right, to add a little weight, like 100 milliseconds. You don't even have to log it into the command log, and now it's reliable. But it's only because my backend is very, very simple in this case. Okay, so this is an example of making API tests in Cypress.